Okay, today we have sheds, houses, villas, apartment buildings, skyscrapers, and many architectural masterpieces. And animals have burrows and nests. Those don't seem so cool at first glance. But some animals can easily triumph over us in the best builder competition. <laughs> Check this out. Do you know these vast residential areas with identical apartment buildings? Some birds in Namibia and South Africa build something similar. Meet Africa's social weavers. This bird is the size of an ordinary sparrow. They live in colonies of up to 500 individuals and build the biggest nests on the planet. One house weighs about 2,000 pounds, slightly less than a passenger car. The nest looks like a massive tangle of twigs and sticks. There are comfortable rooms behind its 7-foot thick walls. Some nests are so sturdy that they can last for a century. Perhaps they're even more reliable than many modern buildings. On average, there are about 100 rooms in one such house. A social weaver's nest is the largest community of vertebrate creatures living in one structure. Rooms have only one exit. There's no complicated tunnel system. Apparently, birds like their privacy. Social weavers build a nest as a team. They use thousands of branches from all over the area and weave them using their tiny beaks. Then, they start making small rooms where the nest frame is ready. Each bird lays grass and feathers inside its house for a more comfortable stay. Like a small family, three or four birds live in one chamber. This way of life is necessary for them to survive. At night, in the semi-arid areas where the birds live, the temperatures can drop to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Water freezes at 32. But look at the social weaver's nest through a thermal imager. You'll see that the temperature inside the chambers reaches 75 degrees. The birds warm one another with their bodies, and feathers and grass inside the room don't allow this heat to come out. Together, these heated cells raise the temperature of the entire nest, so birds can easily survive the cold. During the day, the sun warms the ground so much, you could probably fry an omelet there. But it's pretty cool inside the nest thanks to the thick layer of branches that create shadow. This nest is also excellent protection against enemies. Imagine an eagle flying high in the sky and looking for prey. It notices a nest in a tree and takes eggs from it. But such a trick won't work with social weavers. These birds enter their chambers from the bottom of the nest. The eagle has to fly under the nest to get something. But of course, it won't do that. The upper part of this structure is like armor, and no enemy can penetrate it. Also, such a position saves the chambers from getting flooded during the rain. Perhaps birds didn't live in groups in the past. They wove single little rooms. Then they began to unite in large flocks, and all their chambers became one single nest. It seems to be an inaccessible fortress, but its main vulnerability is trees. Sometimes nests get so heavy that the trunks can't withstand this weight and break. It often happens during the rain when branches get wet, which increases the weight of the entire nest. If a snake or some other bird gets into the nest, social weavers surround it and start making loud squawking noises to scare the unwelcome guest away. This works with small enemies, but won't scare away eagles or big reptiles. The social weaver is one of the few birds whose population is growing today. They don't suffer from expanding human activity, but adapt to it. You can see many telephone poles on which social weavers have built huge nests. Now, walking through the forests of Australia, you can come across the unusual nest of the bower bird. It looks like a hut created by some little person. It's one of the few bird nests that look beautiful, and the bower bird does this intentionally. The nest is made of long, dry branches and resembles an arch. A male bowerbird builds a beautiful house and then decorates it with various objects. It can be stones, shells, feathers, leaves, and even coins. The bird doesn't care what kind of object it is. The color is important. The bowerbird tries to make the nest as colorful as possible to attract a female. When the house is ready, a female inspects it. If the bird doesn't like it, the male abandons the nest and then builds a new one. Now, these birds don't collect branches and leaves to build their nest. They make holes in hill slopes or in the ground. Each is a small nest where one bee-eater family lives. 
They use their beaks to knock on a hard surface like a pickaxe. Then they throw out the loosened dirt with their feet. They work until five eggs fit inside the burrow. These birds' diet consists mostly of bees. They're not afraid of these insects. The bee-eaters' main enemies are snakes and larger birds. Now, take grass, reeds, and palm stems and weave a small basket. It'll probably take you a long time. The southern masked weaver can produce such a basket in 9 to 14 hours. These unusual nests hang on tree branches. One male can build about 12 nests like this in a few days. Then he shows them to a female. If she chooses a nest, the male makes an entrance tunnel into it. Then the female decorates the interior with feathers and soft grass. Now let's move to the world of insects. The appearance of a wasp nest under the porch of your house is a bad sign. Nobody wants a colony of aggressive stinging bugs near their windows. But let's get closer and figure out how these insects create such strange nests. And what are they made of? One of the most common species of wasps is paper wasps. They can build nests in any place that has a solid horizontal base. That's why they often choose ceilings, cornices, and porches. They start building in the corners to get more protection. Next, the queen begins to look for the materials for the nest. The wasp chooses something wooden. It can be a log, a trunk, cardboard boxes, or a fence. With its powerful jaws, it scrapes off a thin layer of wood and chews it. The wasp's saliva splits wood fibers and turns them into a soft mass. Then the insect spits this material out and begins to mold a nest out of it. The construction may take four to six months. When the queen has offspring, the little wasps help it build the nest. The colony makes a house and leaves it in a couple of months. In the fall, the queen flies to a warm place to survive the winter. Then, in the spring, it chooses a new location and builds a new nest. Here, the mud dauber wasp differs from other species. It builds its nest out of mud. The queen doesn't have workers who help it create a house. It does everything alone. The place for the nest should be close to mud springs. The queen scrapes off some soft dirt with its jaws and then rolls it into a small ball. Then, holding it with its front legs, the queen delivers it to the nest site. The wasp stocks up on the construction materials and begins to mold the nest. It moistens the substance with its saliva to make it smooth and shape it like a short tube. The queen creates several pipes with chambers inside. There, it lays eggs. While its offspring grow up, the wasp begins to look for food. Its favorite dish is spiders. Mmm, boy! It bites them and injects a paralyzing poison. Aww. Then it brings the prey to the nest, where hungry little wasps are waiting for lunch. Don't be surprised if you notice hundreds of paralyzed spiders on the ground. It means that a nest of mud dauber wasps is nearby. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.